Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to go through some real modeling fundamentals. We're going to show you how you can really model anything just, just using a few primitives. Now we are using Blender here, but this here is also software agnostic. This is going to work for every software out there. When you're working in 3D, you have four main primitives to work from. You have a plane, you have a cube or box, then we have a sphere, and then we have a cylinder. And out of these, you can really make most things. Of course, there are some except exceptions, but in reality, the majority of all the shapes in, part in your room right now, wherever you might be, could be made from these shapes. And you might be thinking, oh, but what about a donut? Yeah, you can make a donut from a cylinder. So it's like, yeah, exactly. you know, there's, there's more advanced 3D shapes as well, but those advanced 3D shapes are oftentimes combinations of other shapes. Yeah, and you're never, not really going to do a donut a whole lot. <laughs> Unless you're doing a donut. <laughs> So we are just going to take a look at some of the some of the ways so we can model different shapes, a different object based on this. Now we aren't actually going to be showing you how to model it. We're just going to be showing you the theory of how these shapes can turn from from something simple to something more complicated. We're starting off with probably the simplest shape in the whole world: a modern cell phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like there's been no advancement in modern cell phone design for ten years, I think, and they've just got downhill. They are just a cube. They're just a cube now. Corners. So the way you would do this is you start off with the simplest shape, with the simplest primitive, which represents the final shape. In this case, we take a cube and then we just scale it down so it fits, has, has the approximate dimensions. And then we're just going to soften off the corners with, with a bevel. And that's really it for making the base shape. Of course, you're going to have to go in and refine it later on. But if you don't have these shapes, then all the refinement isn't going to matter. It re this video is really about how do we get the base shapes so that you can refine it. Yeah, and then, I mean, from there, you know, you could do an insert for the screen to get that little bit of an edge separation between the glass and the metal. You could add a jack port. Oh, wait, no, I guess phones don't have <laughs> a rip and that anymore. So you could add a, another USB-C connector, I don't know, something, you know. But again, it's just using primitive shapes in other primitive shapes. Then we have a pencil. Wow. And very <laughs> simple. But it, it, this is not so much to show you a impressive modeling. This is more so that you can start to think about how to get these final shapes. I've seen a lot of weird ways to get to these results. But you really start with a simplest shape. You start with a cylinder. Then we scale it down on two axes, and then we um, simply just extrude it down and scale it in like this. One thing that really helped me when I was starting out with 3D modeling, it, it was kind of it wasn't a such a such a it wasn't really a conscious exercise that I did. I just started to notice that I did it. I started to overlay like a wireframe on top of everything in the real world like i would walk around i'd be so damaged from just doing like 3d for like 12 hours a day that i would like look at a building and then i would imagine the wireframe and how you would make that in 3d where, where would the loops go look at a lamppost i mean these are really basic examples are basically cubes and cylinders but the reality is most of the objects in our life are just boxes and cylinders you know this we are sitting here with microphones that's a cylinder connected to a like a stand with boxes your closet is a box your table's a box your windows are a box i mean it's it's you can use it for so many things yeah what you're saying here is really important like i, I have exactly the same thing when i was starting out you were just starting to look at shapes and i think that's really important because it's a great way to learn 3d when it comes to 3d like you can really solve a lot of the problems without actually doing using software you can you could really look at the shapes and figure out this is a cylinder and then once you start to model in 3d it's going to be way faster because mm -hmm. you're modeling with the correct approach we have something slightly more complicated we have a bottle so here we are taking the the cylinder we're scaling it down we're adding some uh, an extrusion to it and we're scaling this down now we're just refining the shape just a little bit to look more like a fancy bottle and then we're just adding a cap on top as well. And this cap here is can just come straight from the cylinder we already have, or you can make a new, a new cylinder and put on top. So this is where it becomes a bit more complicated because you, yeah, of course this here is a cylindrical shape, but you might not imagine that this shape here will be used as a direct starting point to get to this shape. But this is also where things can turn slightly complicated, right? You look at, I think the more advanced bottles that, that would be something like 
Fanta or a Sprite bottle or something, they sometimes, it's really annoying actually if you have to model it in 3D, because sometimes they have like inserts that go diagonally across the bottle. So it's not just like, oh, you can just extrude in and out, make it thin, make it thick. No, they might have tiny dots that protrude out of the bottle as well to like, you know, for better grip. I think this is especially apparent with Sprite bottles. So obviously, while these are the simple shapes to create anything, that you can still end up with very complex shapes within the simple shape. Yeah, you, you, even if you want to make the most fancy wine bottle or whatever, you would still start out with something like this. This there isn't like a, uh, oh, this is just pure pure basics and we're never going to use this. No, no, this is what you use every <laughs> single day as a modeler. Then we have a cap. This is where we're combining two objects into one. This is the end result. So we're now starting off with a sphere. Uh, and this will just be starting with a sphere just because this emulates, well, the head shape. And then we scale that, we delete half of the sphere, we scale it down a little bit, and we're also adding a plane to this as well. Then we're bending the plane, or we're just adding a segment in the middle and just moving it up. We're adding some more refinement to the plane just so it fits with the actual cap, and we're adding a little cylinder on top here. And then we're just adding thickness to everything. Obviously quite simple modeling, but this you could totally turn into like a full asset. Yeah, the interesting thing, like if you if you try to think about a cap, right? So while the basic shapes are a sphere and a plane technically, and then a cylinder on top, once you start to refine the shape, then I mean you might start out with a sphere, but then you start to alter that shape a little bit. So it's just to try to drive the point across that it's what emulates the shape that's closest to it. Like a sphere in this case would 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 be what's closest to it. But then you end up, you put it on your head, it's actually like, becomes a little more boxy because it's, you know, it pushed in on the sides, maybe it's longer at the back, and there's a hole in the back as well. But it's to get you to think about what basic shapes can you utilize in order to get there. Then we have the old school Nokia phone. <laughs> I love these phones. They're so boxy and awesome, <laughs> and they can withstand a nuclear blast. So this, is, this looks slightly more complicated and slightly more interesting than some of the stuff we showed before. But the steps are really quite simple. We're starting off with a cube, because that's, I mean, that's basically what all Nokia is. It's just a box. Then we scale the cube down to resemble the shape. Then we add some general refinement to the shape. Then we're adding the screen inset for it. Then we're adding new boxes for it. These are separate objects, and they're just individual boxes which you just duplicate around. And then we're just adding some refinement to it, like we see, see we, we soften off the corners a little bit on top and bottom, and we soften off some of the buttons as well. And we just make a bit more refinement. You can see here the shape, the overall shape is softer, and here it's very boxy. And, and this here you could, you, with not a whole lot more work, you could turn into like a final Nokia model from like early 2000s. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing more to add to this. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> and then we have a camera. So obviously a rough model as well, but you could totally turn this into something more complicated. Here you can see that we're starting off with again with a box and we're scaling the box down. And now we're just adding uh, a simple extrusion out here as well. Uh, if you want to know how to do some of these things, we have an actual uh, series. We have a five part series in modeling, modeling a lightsaber where we go through all the steps there as well. And we actually show you how to do a lot of these things. And then we extrude it once more just to build a shape. And then we're adding a cylinder to it because everything is disconnected in real life. You really don't want to make the cylinder here, like make the lens out of the same piece. Then you are in trouble very, very quickly. And then we are just refining the shapes a little bit more. We can just see we're just adding a bit more, a bit, bit more of a bevel. We're just adding some more shapes here. We're adding some more refinement to the lens. And we're just adding another cylinder here for the, for the dial. So you can see how you can really quickly start to get more and more complex shapes by combining all your base shapes. This gets even more apparent when you have even more complex objects, but just knowing that these exist, that's really going to help you a lot. So I think it's really important, especially if you're just starting out, to try to go around your day and perceive things, what they can be made of. Like right now, we, you know, we have a mouse on the, on the table. Maybe you could you could either make that out of a, like maybe half a cylinder, or maybe you would start from a box and then like soften it up a little bit. So, so have a think about how you can construct objects that you see around you in real life in 3D and like what kind of primitives you would use to create them.
Yeah, this has been an exercise we've been using. We've been teaching very, very basic 3D is really model all these things, but you can only use a sphere, a cube, a plane, and a cylinder. And it's very interesting how advanced you can actually get. You can probably model most robots ever made for anything with just a cube and a cylinder. <laughs> yeah. And basically. just add some thickness to it and add some variation to it. So yeah, that's uh, that's essentially it. Uh, very simple uh, fundamental modeling. This here will really serve as the foundation for all the 3D modeling you can do, regardless of what software it is. This is just good polygonal modeling. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, let us know in the comments what kind of modeling tutorials you want to see and make sure to like, comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.